Okay, let's take a look at restrictive defaults. This is yet another term that isn't explicitly covered in your books, but it is found in the common body of knowledge. It's a domain three topic, and it's related to the concept of secure defaults and failing securely, which are also covered in domain three. So without further time wastage, let's get into it. Let me pull up my notes here. So the term comes from NIST 853. This is the control number SA-8, subcontrol number 23. The secure defaults and restrictive defaults are basically the same thing. And the principle asserts that any product as shipped is secure by default. And the mechanism by which this is achieved is by applying a deny all or a deny unless explicitly authorized philosophy. And it also asserts that the product can prevent breaches by default. And the exact wording is something like should not aid in the violation of security policy. And continuing on with that logic, if a system fails to initialize, the actions it performs will be done securely by default. So it almost seems like a no-brainer. A basic example of this might be, you know, if you were a phone or a laptop or a mobile device manufacturer, someone who produces these, one of your secure defaults might be before you ship it to the customer, it's configured so that it does not allow connection to a wireless access point using WEP or wired equivalent privacy or TKIP because as you know, those have vulnerabilities that can be exploited. And so you would have to require the user to go in and change those and manually override them. So then what is fail securely? Fail securely asserts that a system or a system component should fail to a known secure state and not result in any violation of a security policy. So the detection of failure should occur at any and all stages of operation. And the common body of knowledge specifically mentions initialization, normal operation, shutdown, and maintenance. And lastly, if this system has successfully implemented this, it should be able to provide uh, degraded, 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 not degraded, but degraded or alternative functionality in a secure fashion. Or basically, it should prevent the system from functioning at all in an insecure state. So the term failure might be presented in your exam with this type of wording. It's a deviation from an expected behavior based on a documented or given input. And so that might seem like a no brainer to some of you, but when you're stressed out and feeling all that pressure during the exam, it's important to at least be familiar with the jargon that they might use because you just never know when the nerves will kick in or when your brain will decide it needs a break. So that's it for this quick lesson. Hope you learned something. We do have new questions on this topic and we do cover it in our free super study guide available on our website. Best of luck in your studies. Have a great day.